So let's talk briefly about increasing marginal returns initially and diminishing marginal returns eventually. So when the marginal product of the worker is greater than the marginal product of the previous worker, then the marginal product of labor increases and the firm uh, experiences increasing marginal returns. So yeah, remember that in the last video I said um, when the marginal product of the second worker was 6 and the marginal product of the first worker was 4. So of course the second worker's marginal product is greater than the marginal product of the previous worker. So the firm experiences an increasing marginal return. This is where this uh, this this uptrend comes from. That's where the uptrend comes from. So the opposite of that is diminishing marginal returns eventually. When the marginal product of, uh, of the latest worker is less than the marginal product of the previous worker. In that case, the marginal product of labor decreases and the firm experiences mar diminishing marginal return. So we know that our second worker has a marginal product of 6 and our, th our third worker that we hire has a marginal product of, uh, I forget, has a marginal product of 3. Oh, I could have looked here. I wasn't really looking at the graph, but yeah. So you can see how useful the graph actually is. So the, the, the third worker had a marginal product of 3 and we know that uh, the marginal product of the third worker or the marginal product of the, yeah, the third worker is less than the marginal product of the previous worker which had a marginal product of 6. So in that case, the marginal product of labor decreases and our firm experiences a downtrend or what you would call in economics as diminishing marginal returns. So there's the downtrend and you can see that it actually continues on down pretty steeply. So uh, that's it for diminishing marginal returns. Let's talk a bit about uh, some uh, more about short run technology with constraints. So increasing marginal returns arises from special increased specialization and division of labor and diminishing marginal return arises from the fact that employing additional units of labor means each worker has less access to capital and space to work with. So to make this more intuitive, uh, pretty much diminishing marginal returns, imagine that you have one person and this this room to work with. So you can see that he had, actually has a lot of room to work with, right? So everything is efficient, but what if we add more people in it? What if we have like uh, like the uh, like ten people that actually filled the room? So now what did they do? So you can see here that it's all, the the room is already very clustered, and that makes things hard to work with. If before, if this guy wanted to get to this point, then he would, he could have got there without bumping into people, but. Uh, now he has to bump into a, lo a lot of other people and they ha he has to distract their work. That's not efficient and that is what kind of caused the, the missing marginal returns or that's a simplified way of this describing how the missing marginal return arises. So the law of diminishing returns formally it means as a firm uses a more variable input with a given quantity of fixed output, the marginal product of the variable input eventually diminishes. And that's basically it. So let's talk about the average product curve and uh, how I got it. So again, this is our average product curve. And of course, how I actually got these points is with the chart that we made uh, in, the, in the past videos. So from this chart, we got all these numbers and just we just plugged them into a graph to make this purple average product curve. Now some facts that you got to know is when marginal product, well yeah, you can see that I overlaid it with marginal product to make it more intuitive. Uh, and the facts are when marginal product exceeds or is above the average product, then average product increases. So you can see that here. Uh, marginal product is above 
the average product you get because here you just distinguish it it's above the marginal product and in this case uh, average product rises because it's rising and it the two conditions is if it's rising and if it's above or no just a single condition I'm getting confusing myself just the condition is if it's above the average product then the then the then the average product increases if it's below the average product the average product uh, decreases if marginal product is equal average product and the average product is at, at, at its maximum so you can see that um, marginal product is increasing here and then it's decreasing now as long as it's above marginal average product then average product will keep on increasing as long as when it falls the this is the marginal products optimum point right and then it starts falling now this this point doesn't make a difference. You would think that it will make a difference, but it actually doesn't. The only, the only uh, difference it makes is none. So the only condition you have to worry about is that you gotta know that marginal product, as long as it's above the average product, then the average product will increase. And then when marginal product hits mar average product, then you know that uh, when they intersect, you know that that is the maximum average product that we're ever going to make. And when marginal product falls below average product, then average product will start decreasing. And that's all I want to go through today. In the next video, we're going to talk about short run costs. But for now, uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.